This is a shared shop where we share resources and collaborate on material between each other. We do everything in the shop from making biodiesel to blacksmithing, making custom knives, armor, and metal sculptures. When one of us needs something that the skills of another can provide, we collaborate on all kinds of different projects from carpentry to metal art to metal fabrication to fueling vehicles for transportation. I'm Josh. This is my blacksmith shop. This is my coal forge. Got a propane forge. Mechanical power hammer. I do a lot of welding and fabrication. This is my mechanical power hammer I built. I got plans off the internet. And uh, it does some damage to hot steel. <laughs> Fabricated the sword sculpture, quarter inch plate of steel. Hi, I'm Randall, um, the owner of Eternity Sculptures. I'm a steel artist and uh, sometimes an electrician. My medium is normally stainless steel. I weld and fabricate it and form it into different um, fine sculptures. Something like this rose. Um, your imagination is the limit. And uh, these are my portion of the shop. My TIG welder and plasma cutter. And then various hand tools and power tools and air tools and sandblasting booth and my oxyacetylene rig, what I use to heat the metal and form it. That's my own little forge. So this is a TIG welder. Um, you have your tungsten torch right here with a hand control and your filler rod. Let me weld in this stainless steel piece to a stainless steel base. Don't look at this video, naked eyes. And as you can see, the weld bead, this is actually one metal now. The, uh, this metal is actually melted into this one, and I just use this to fill the gap. So the whole thing is a solid piece of stainless steel now. Uh, Jack McAuliffe. I am the sole worker in the uh, old oak forge, as I call it. Um, most of what I do is traditional work, bladesmithing, armor making, historical crafts, jewelry, things like that. Um, a lot of what I try to do is based on historical techniques, less use of more industrial mechanical things, and more hand crafted and hand worked tools. Uh, what I'm doing right now is working on the heat treatment of some of these blades. These have been, these are actually pattern welded, so there's four bars of steel going horizontally down this blade. Um, what I'm going to do now is just heat it up and quench it in oil so it will be hardening the blade. See all 
the different steels right there. The darks and the lights. That's the high carbon and that's the medium carbon and then on the edge is the more high carbon. Hi, my name is Topher Mira and I am the Eco Arborist. And this is my climbing gear. I'm a professional tree climber, an arborist, and I have a tree service. And the, uh, the cool thing about my tree service is that all my vehicles and all the trucks that I use, we, uh, we, I, I do my own vegetable oil fuel kit installations here at the shop. And I built a biodiesel processor and I make my own fuel to service my tree company. Hence the term Eco Arborist. So this is just the various gear for climbing trees. You know, my spikes, my harness, various ropes. This is what I call lifeline. This is a tagline. This is my uh, bull rope, climbing saw, and big saw. Just various arborist pieces of equipment. Of course, the helmet is essential as well. We do our own fuel system, so we are independent from big oil companies, and we're really self-motivating because we make our own fuel. So we custom fabricate vegetable oil fuel kits here at the shop and we install them into cars. These are the various parts that uh, compose a vegetable oil fuel kit. A lot of these custom brackets we make ourselves and uh, we fit them to uh, different vehicles. Each vehicle is different so we have to like customize brackets and make different things. And another thing we do is we have a biodiesel processor here and we make our own biofuels, we make our own diesel fuel. So this is the mixing uh, area here and this Venturi system here that helps atomize the fluid and mix the chemicals better. And then we have uh, a distilling column here that um, <coughs> distills all the methanol out of the fuel and helps dry the fuel into a, a nice product to get a better quality standard. It's a really, uh, it's a cool way to get off get off the dependency of foreign oil and uh, yeah. This is local sustainable biofuels that we're using to fuel our fleet here at the shop. I'm Scott, I'm a biofuels engineer. We make biodiesel and straight vegetable oil for fuel for cars. So here in the greenhouse this is completely recycled material for the entire thing. Um, we went to a local farm in Westboro, Mass, and um, we helped take down their broken, um, their broken greenhouse that went through a snow load and crashed in. And we brought that, the broken greenhouse here, took all of the poles, cut them, re-welded them. All of our compost from local restaurants and various um, collectives and even our own uses and local arborists bring their wood chips here. We blend it all in and that helps to heat the greenhouse and also bring back the organic matter cycle. Look at that. Steaming pile of compost. So good. So it's late February right now and we're here in our greenhouse trying to heat it up a little bit. We're essentially designing a heat exchanger to pull heat out of this compost and help to heat the rest of the space so we don't need to have a fire or get natural gas or propane. So this is the bike generator. We have Rafi, our good friend here and Tor Companiero pedaling for us. And what we have is pedal power in motion. You can see here as Rafi pedals, the, the rear bottom bracket is spinning and our belt drive system right there spins the generator. So this is using 90% reclaimed bicycle parts and the, the rest being the generator which is just uh, essentially a DC 12 volt scooter motor which is being used in reverse and we're spinning the motor rather than being spun by the motor and thus getting energy out of it. Uh, my name is Ian. I'm a carpenter, an engineer, mechanical engineer, metal worker, welder. Um, I do all, all sorts of work, whatever's fun and exciting. Um, hot air balloonist in addition. Um, and right now my, my work is working building a concrete countertop. I'm making um, some wooden pieces for the form right now, but fixing the planer first. 
I'll show you some of the pieces over here. These are some of the color samples that I just did. Uh, I'm just trying out different colors, different way of forming up the um, forms to pour concrete counter pieces. This is my truck that uh, runs on vegetable oil and biodiesel. We make biodiesel in the shop there and do vegetable oil conversions. I've done uh, about six conversions at this point on Volkswagens, uh, Mercedes, trucks. I built this house um, to be a sort of um, test out an idea of living in a very, very small space. So this house is 100 square feet. It's 8 by 13 feet. If you count the loft, you add an extra 50 square feet, so I call it 150. It'll be a self-sufficient house entirely uh, off the grid. I did most of the construction on this house inside an old firehouse in the city and hauled it out on that trailer and put it in location. Every time I move it, I have to take off the roof because it's about 18 feet tall and I'll be taking out power lines and all sorts of things on the road. But it's going to be built so that it is somewhat mobile. The roof is built in modular sections. The rafters are up now and covered with the tarp. But I have four panels that drop on top. And eventually it'll have a copper, a standing seam copper roof. One in. So this is it, I built it using a fairly traditional style of building. It's post and beam, timber frame construction, which means that all of these beams are held together with mortise and tenon joints and pegs. There are no nails in the frame of the house. We're designing a catapult that will launch a laptop 100 yards without breaking. So our idea is to make a giant slingshot. Yeah, okay, so the slingshot portion or the wrist rocket or whatever you want to call it, we're going to have the uh, surgical tubing, so that part. a bunch of strands, and then a steel base with a track. Yeah, the track. You know, the track. To, like a guide or whatever for the for the glider to glide off of, so we can aim it, and then uh, webcam, so it can record its own flight. That'll be good. Yeah, it's already a laptop. You might as well use it as a laptop, right? Perch webcam right on the front of it, and see the whole thing take off and land, and hopefully not smash. And if it does, that's going to be recorded too. So the, the glider will be, the, the shell will be made out of fiberglass and inside will fill with foam. Yeah. So it's going to have a box on the inside filled with foam around the laptop, sealed up to protect it. Um, and then it's going to have breakaway wings, so when it lands it doesn't start spinning around and doing all sorts of things. Usually make a fuselage that's somewhat aerodynamic, has lots of padding inside. You know, it's very smooth on the bottom, have some wings, so that when it does launch, it just glides down. They can even sort of skim across the grass, not even... No yeah, we don't even have to have really real height if we use yeah. a glider. Yeah, you can put long wings on it. You know, they make uh, those big styrofoam gliders. There wouldn't be any reason why we couldn't make just a bigger one. Yeah, just like that. Or like I've already got, like, I have, like, a huge bulk of fiberglass. We could even oh, make yeah. styrofoam and then just... Wrap it in fiber? It is, it's, air, uh, it's like propeller grade fiberglass cloth, not uh -huh. the um, And we would need it, the, the shape of it would need to be kind of like, you know, I, I would say sort of broad, obviously the shape of a, a laptop, but it'd be best, like let's say this is a laptop, it'd be best to turn it this way yeah. and have, have it be longer and then kind of have it be like a teardrop. Yeah, kind of exactly. shape. yeah we put like a tray yeah. basically on top of the fuselage with the wings coming off like right here or whatever, yeah. and then like just a big flat skid. We need some kind of hook. It'd be perfect. Yeah, and we could do it. We could just have a long channel, a piece of um, U channel or something, mm -hmm. with and surgical this, tubing at the front. And this would stay in um, that channel. I mean, this is basically how they they had these huge slingshots for gliders, for like glider rides. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same thing. Oh, so like, they tow them up by other planes. Some sometimes they're towed up by planes, but they also have slingshots. <laughs> Dude, that would be really crazy. <laughs> like like a catapult up with a carrier. That's exactly what we'd be doing. That'd 